You ever notice how they modded the PS2 before releasing any PS5 games? My dad was a gamer. That's how I got the game myself. He was a Sega loyalist to the point he even got a Saturn because when the PS1 released, everyone thought it was just another Panasonic 3DO or Philips CDI. Another big name trying to compete with the big guys. But then when games started to flood the PS1 and less and less support came to the Saturn, most people just threw away those Saturns and got the new hot video game machine. Only dumb little f***ing babies got an N64 though. My dad is now a PlayStation chill. Fuck Xbox. Fuck Nintendo. Fuck Sega. I hope they die in 2001. Aww. And later on, when the PS2 released, my dad nabbed it as soon as his at-the-time shithole job paid him a little more than enough for him to afford it and the mortgage. And thus began the journey of my video game saga. The PS2 holds the crown of first video game console for me. Well, it shares the spot with the NES, but truth be told, I couldn't tell you which one I had first. I, I wasn't three that recent, even though I'm a dumb little baby boy. The PS2 literally appealed to everything and everyone. It had shit ton of games. It could play PS1 games, CDs, DVDs, could run fucking Linux operating system. Is backwards compatible with PS1 controllers and memory cards? Everything lined up for this thing alongside being the second PlayStation. But just because you've been getting games for 12 years doesn't mean you aren't an aged little sack of plastic. So what can you do with this thing in the absolute blessed year of 2024 where absolutely nothing bad has happened? Oh yeah, that's my than PS2. It's gonna be go. Okay, you don't have to be a fucking dick about it. I know we're gonna be fucking... You don't have to be a dick. The PS2 I have I got back in 2019 with the sole intention of modding it. But back then the only meaningful way of modding this thing wasn't readily available for my broke 13 year old ass. I modded my Wii because you know there was like five SD cards rotting in different cameras my parents bought 10 years ago. I got sick of modding the Wii U, but I only modded it because you know I had four other SD cards I could have used. Then I modded the PS3 as it was super easy. All you need to do was plug some files onto a USB stick. And if you ask, yes, I'm gonna make the fucking PS3 modding video. Shut the fuck up. And yeah, I could just back up all my games and then sell them back to GameStop for some sweet cash. PS3 games still gave you some money. But it's the ripe year of 2024. It's time to buckle up and mod this thing because out of all these consoles, the PS2 is the easiest fucking thing to mod. The easiest method I found to do was get a free MacBook memory card off Amazon. You can make one yourself with your own memory card, but honestly, there's like 10 bucks on Amazon, I'd highly suggest it. Another thing I don't know if you really need, but I do like 100% recommend it, is a SATA adapter that you plug into the back of the PS2. I have a 500 gig SSD plug back here because truth be told, I didn't want to plug a hard drive back in here because I didn't have a mount. I mean, I could have hot glued it. Okay, fine, I won't hot glue it, alright? When you unplug the memory card and boot up the PS2, it should boot normally. This probably makes it the best console to mod reversibility-wise, but the fact it's as simple as plugging in a memory card loaded with a bunch of slop probably makes this the easiest modding job to ever video game a console mod. You get what I'm saying? I don't need to make sense. But yeah, all you gotta do is plug in the memory card and show boy, and that's a modded PS2! So what can you do with a modded PS2? Stuff, that's what you can do. When you get your PS2 free McBooted, you can see a selection of options including but not limited to the shutdown system and a bunch of irrelevant options. Of course, with all my modding videos, there's pretty much the main four categories. Boring and useful shit, unofficial ways to play official games, unofficial games and homebrew, and emulation. Some of the stuff I talk about aren't included with the free McBoot, but 90% of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is like, in the free McBoot card, when you get it. So let's start off with the boring shit. You can view the console BIOS version. Oh, big sweetie, that's not boring. I love BIOS versions. I love keeping track of them in Microsoft Excel. I got a degree in Biology. Well, it's boring to me. And also, that Biosology joke worked way better than I thought it would. I guess it's useful because, like, BIOS versions are useful. I don't know. I'm just a girl in a big world. But in this category, one lies the most useful of them all. You Launch Elf. You Launch Elf allows you to manage your files on your PS2. It also allows easy launching of the elves. From my research, I think it's called W Launch Elf now, but mine came with U Launch Elf, so fuck you, I'm calling it that. I don't have much more to say on it other than you can manage PS2 files and open executables all through the comfort of the second PS. Now I'm gonna tell you what you wanna hear, you dirty slut. Simple media system. It's a media player. A high quality one too. Gaming. Before we get into the emulation side of shit, we gotta talk about playing games that run natively on PS2. There's OPM PS2 LD, I'm gonna call it Opnips Tula, and HD Loader, which were preloaded on my Fumkaba card, which allows you to dump your game disc onto the HDD and play them off the HDD. Which means, yeah, you could load games on your PS2 hard drive that you totally dumped from some other means and definitely didn't illegally obtain with an eye patch and a hook for a hand. I only mentioned HD Loader because it's loaded here, but as of recording this, HD Loader is totally obsolete and overtaken by Opnips Tula. I can't even fucking say the fucking name I try to make because it was easier. As they pretty much do the same thing. I've seen people say HD Loader does better with load times, but I don't gaff enough to compare and people will tell you just to use Opsnips to load. I can't fu- How did I make an easier name that I can't even say? But yeah, if you have a reasonable way to load games on here, Happy birthday. Codebreaker is an awesome little tool that lets you add cheats to the PS2 and it works perfectly. Codebreaker was actually a real product you could buy back in the day and you still can. But Free McBoot comes with it included, so it's super convenient. While the PS2 isn't as popular as other consoles in the modding scene, the PS2 community has slapped together homebrew ports of games. Super Mario War, my favorite piece of homebrew ever, has a port on PS2 and while I'll die on the hill that nothing beats playing the game on Wii with friends, this game runs flawless and there's really no complaints at all. 
Mario War is just that guy. However, on the other end, the Taxman Sonic ports and Sonic Mania are absent from here, which, let's be real. If you have the interest of playing Sonic 1, 2, CD, and Mania on the PS2, you most likely have Sonic Mega Collection Plus and or Sonic Gems Collection. You honestly don't get the same amount of quality of life you get from playing the PS2 port of Taxman Sonic 1 than playing Sonic 1 on Mega Collection. I guess widescreen, but the PS2 widescreen's barely widescreen. And also, Sonic 1's ass anyway, so who cares? As cool as it would be, no one gaffs enough to port these, except for Sonic CD, that got ported, I don't know why. Mario 64 is here, and it's ready to be here. 64 is actually a pretty damn solid port. I got nothing bad to say about it. I think more modern consoles have their merits, and this definitely isn't the best way to play 64, but it's here if you want it. So go get it. Human Half-Life Blue Shift were ported, Quake was ported, but other than that, Homebrew on this thing is kind of lackluster, and that's kind of sad, but let's hope emulators make up for it. The PS2 has a lengthy list of emulators under its belt, and Funkabud comes with a good starter pack of consoles that definitely work the best. PS2 Info GB is a Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator, and it runs pretty damn great. But if something can't run Game Boy and Game Boy Color games emulation-wise, then that's just an automatic disqualification of the console in the modding scene. Actually, not even like modding-wise, it's just fucking sad. FCEU is a pretty damn good NES and Famicom emulator that runs pretty solid. SNES Station also runs solid with a little bit of audio issues here and there, but you can fix it easily. The Super Nintendo's biggest hater, the Genesis, has its own emulator with PGen. It runs good. I don't know what you want me to say here. It runs good. And the last of the included bunch is Temp GBA. It runs good. But two emulators that I picked out that weren't included on here were Didalus X64 and Popstarter. Didalus X64 is an N64 emulator, and while compatibility is super hit or miss, the games that are playable play just fine with little to no issue or and, and or stutter. Definitely not the best way to play these games, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. It's like playing these on the Vita or PSP, but on a TV. But I think the coolest one is Popstarter. It's a whole PS1 emulator. And honestly, that's it for like heavy hitting things that give you a reason to mod this thing. So, in conclusion, why would you mod one of these things? Well, honestly, soft modding consoles isn't as simple as making the console better and more convenient. Soft modding is a fun hobby for people, and the part of the fun is the process and fun of unlocking the console to do things it couldn't do before. Yeah, the PS2 compared to every single console I've gone over, is definitely the most useless in modding terms, but the enjoyment of seeing what this thing can do once you bypass what stopped you before is one of the key things that makes modding a hobby. And a hobby is supposed to be your fun thing, so... Yeah. I probably wouldn't play the PS2 version of anything that has better versions somewhere else, but the fact the PS2 can do all this is what makes the modding scene super fun. I see people comment shit like, why mod a Vita when you could just get a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally? Because first off, Bitch, I have a grudge against anything ROG because my G14 shit the bed, and while yeah, the Steam Deck is one of the best values in gaming at this very moment, what's fun about booting into these games on a Steam Deck? Half the modding enjoyment comes from seeing it be possible. Whether it's the best way to do it, is up in the air. I don't play FNAF on Wii U because it's the definitive FNAF experience. Okay, it kinda is, but my point still makes sense. I play FNAF on Wii U because it's a fucking party trick. Oh, look at me, I'm playing FNAF on the Wii U, aren't I fucking cool as shit? So yeah, the PS2 isn't definitely the modding pariah or anything like the Wii U, Wii, 3DS, or Vita, but just getting this thing modded is enough of a reason to mod it. Yeah, I'm sorry for the shorter video, but I needed to defend my father's favorite console because Expo sure as hell wasn't gonna. Anyway, adios amigos, see you in Spanish class.